All right, let's get right into today's topic. Today I want to deal with um, the, pro uh, the prophecies of Jesus' coming. Isaiah chapter 52, 13 to 15 says this, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man and his form more than any of the sons of men. In other words, that he gets his physical being. It's a prophecy of Jesus on the cross. All right. And it's actually saying how bad it is that you will not recognize him as a person. The Bible says that he is marred. He's beaten up. His skin is torn. And he is so badly um, uh, damaged in his physical body that it is more than anybody else ever before. The only thing that happens with Jesus on the cross is not one bone physically gets broken. Okay. And so, verse 15. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them, they shall see. And what they had not heard, they will consider. Now I want you to see this prophetic word, and it's really exciting. Because, firstly, I want you to understand, this was 750 years before Jesus Christ was born. And so this prophecy was given way before he even came on the scene and said that he's going to be marred beyond any man, but he's going to get all the kings and everybody to submit to him. So this is speaking about two events, the cross and Armageddon, okay, the final battle. And so God is prophesying through Isaiah and saying, listen, this is coming, but I want you to understand something. That when Jesus Christ comes to this earth, he's well aware of what he has to go through. That's why when he was at Gethsemane, he asked God, God, if you can, take this cup from me. Because to be marred beyond any recognition. Remember this, Jesus Christ carried every sickness on his body as well. Can you imagine having every form of sickness on your body at the same time? Plus the beating plus all of the things that he had gone through. The Bible says that they could not even recognize that he was a man. So I want you to see that they are prophesying well in advance. And Jesus Christ had to make that decision. So this morning, when we come around communion, I want you to understand, when Jesus Christ made that decision to die for you and I, he knew what he was in for. He knew what he had to do for us. He knew the price he had to pay. He knew the pain he had to endure. I want to say this. Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. All right. He made a decision, a willful decision to die on that cross, go through all the pain, go through all of the the agony that he had to for you and I. And so this morning, when we come around the table, let us celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth with a plan. Jesus Christ knew exactly what he had to do. But he did it because he loves you. And I want to close with this. You are worth it. You are worth it. Some of us might feel like we are not worth it. Some of us might feel that we are not worthy of something. I want to tell you, if you were the only person on this planet, Jesus Christ would have died for you. Because you are worth it. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he said that this is my body that was broken for you. Take it in remembrance of me. He took the cup and he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take it in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for our physical, emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed for our salvation, protection, and provision. So this morning, let us celebrate the fact that Jesus woefully chose the road to salvation for you and I. He woefully chose to be the sacrificial lamb for you and I. And he chose to carry every form of sin and sickness for you and I. 
Jesus Christ loves us. Jesus Christ loves you. I want you to repeat after me. Jesus Christ loves me. Jesus Christ loves me. Let that be a revelation today. Lord, we come before you. I ask you please to forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, any wrong action, any wrong motive. I ask you please to wash us white as snow. But Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that you are going to bring us to the place of destiny and purpose. Jesus, I thank you for making that decision and dying on the cross for us and actually going through everything. And Lord, I thank you for coming to this planet and laying aside your deity, knowing what you had to go through. Lord, right now, I thank you that we'll get a revelation of your love for us and how much you actually care for us. Lord, thank you for coming to this planet to save us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. All right, let's partake together. Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. Lord, we worship you, we honor you, and we thank you, Lord, that you paid the price for us. Lord, we thank you that you paid the price for our healing. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we command every symptom to loose our bodies. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we were healed. Thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of God. And, Lord, that we can move in power and might. And, Lord, that we walk in the fullness of what you have for us. And, Lord, that we do not have any symptom left in our body. We command these symptoms to go in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I'm so, so excited. All right. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single step of the way, every day, something else just gives me a better understanding of how much the Lord loves us. So let's just pray for our families. I want to remind you that Children's Church is on. So please go to Father's Art Kids and go and get um, the Children's Church uh, videos there for the children. They are busy with a three-week countdown to Christmas. So please get ready for that. And then also I want to remind you that Pastor Don is on at 10 o'clock and then I'm on tonight. All right. And I'm dealing with the issue of your mantle. All right. The mantle. What is the anointing on your life and how important is it to you? All right. So I want you to meet me tonight at six o'clock. I'm dealing with the importance of the mantle. Okay. So let's pray for our families. Lord, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, that we can pray for our families. Lord, we lift them up before you. We thank you, Lord, that, uh, that your blessing rest on each one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray your destiny, purpose, and rest over each one of us. Lord, I thank you right now that our families are blessed. They are anointed. Father, I pray right now that they will fulfill everything that you've called them to do in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the anointing and the power of God that rests on them. Lord, I thank you that every step that they take, they'll be doing it under the unction of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you'll finish the work that you started in us. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, this morning I release the blessing, the anointing, and the power of God over our families. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Amen. All right. Folks, I love you lots, and I want you to do this declaration with me. Do it in faith. Let's believe God for the supernatural in everything that we do. Amen. All right, let's go. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God on my life. So saints, I want you to go out and enjoy today. But remember this, release peace and blessing wherever you go in the mighty name of Jesus.